Series E. Series E. Series E. Apex Legends. Apex Legends. Apex Legends. Series E. Series E. Apex Legends. Series E. Apex Legends starts right now. Welcome everybody to Series E. Jamerson here, joined once again by Tom T Squared Taylor. And Tom, we are moving on to the third week of Series E qualifiers. All right, we are heading into game number one. We have to remember that a lot is on the line. We still have a $1,000 prize pool that only the top two will be placing, uh, making that money. But also, winning today means you will get that partnership slot. You'll be getting $500 a month. You'll be partnered with one of our nine amazing partners. And you'll be competing amongst some of the best teams in Apex Legends throughout the regular season as well. A lot on the line today here for Series E, and time is starting to run out as we are in the week three of qualifiers. Standings from a good game individually, a win means everything. But taking a look at Flying Drones, one of our favorite teams here to watch, they're already down a couple of players, and it's not looking good. They're already out. That's our first team, I think, eliminated, Jamerson. But the triple take. Massive combination, Jamerson. How often do you see this one? They're both kind of shotguns at this point, so I would consider that he's rocking double shotguns. 2-4 scope, really fun. Great bubble getting onto the Watson right here. Does bust out the Massive. Has the ADS as well. Great team fight already going over to aim assist on OP's advantage. They just have to finish it off. Where's the help for Dracos? Yeah, we can see a lot of low hell bars on the uh, health bars on the other side right now. They are trapped inside the caravan now, and that is not the position you want to be in when you're trying to reset and heal up. Draco's knows it. He goes in, and he's getting so much damage off with that. They're trying to push on into this uh, into this building, but the opposing side has already gotten out. They've gotten onto the roof, and hundreds is dropped down low. He's got about 30 HP. He tries to pop the Q, but it's going to be on mode to take him out. It's one for one as Blitzen goes down on the other side. It comes down to a 2v2, but Sneak has taken so much damage now. They're trying to push through that door, but the damage is there. It's another trade coming out now, though. Caselus in a 1v1, and this is going to be massive for them. He goes for that bat. He'll be able to get the heal up. And he's going to try and hop out, get the flank from the other side, spots him out, cracks the armor. Now he backs away. There was a res, and it looks like it might just be enough. There it is. Never mind. No res was there. There are two great teams going at it. Fortunately, the third party going to go and clean that one up, so they're not going to be able to reap the benefits. As you look at all of the action happening, back to did we make it over here? A very, very skilled team. Seeing them do great in the ALGS. Also, you're going to see Zara Tricky and friends getting onto the kill feed. They're getting some action over there. Our team that's number one in points. But this hill, this highly coveted hill, extremely popular. We see so many great teams hold this area. As we go back to Zara Tricky, they are fighting on the Overlook side. So just back and forth over here towards the rotation spots. As this started to pull towards the refinery side, and I don't think a lot of teams expected that. This kind of hole is uh, a little bit difficult to read, and so we're seeing a lot of teams making their movements, and uh, we're seeing a lot of death as we're now down to 12 squads left. 11 squads now. Boxes in there. That could be a game-winning play if we eventually see them get back onto the map. That's exactly what happened as we look at DPT in a tough fight over here. On this high-end rotation, again, another very tough spot to hold down. And when you don't have your ult cell being popped and you don't have the generator, you're going to eat these defensive bombardments. Exactly what happened. Drake was like, keep your shield up, bro. Protect me. What are you doing? Yeah, he's taking so much damage. He will go down. It's all of the tempo left now. As it looks like Tempo will be able to get the res onto Pride, and Pride has to pop that Q instantly. Try to survive for as long as possible. Drago gets thirsted, and Pride finds a nice little corner here to try and heal up. He sees the Gibraltar bubble up top. The Wraith drops down, pulls out the Massive for a massive hit. He is able to get one, it looks like. And will they be able to hold on? They will. Ronnie is now the kill leader with five kills to his name. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to get his team back into it. So it's just going to be up to him to try and rat this out for as much position points as possible. I'm pretty sure we've seen Zara Tricky and his squad win a circle just like this by doing the same exact thing. They love to hold this high ground. 
And fortunately for them, there's Pathfinder zip lines all over the place. Taking on Did We Make It is going to be tough, but the Gibraltar defensive bombardment goes down. There's not going to be any type of Watson generator. And there goes the scan, so we'll see what happens as they go to try to push up on top of this rock. Yeah, that scan's massive. It lets him know that he's able to climb up for free and uh, doesn't have to really challenge without knowing what's going on. But the crossfire and the retreat was set up already, but Sung, hanging out for way too long, he gets mantled up on, and he's going to get taken out by Zara Tricky. With Mr. Haculo low, though, they can't get overly aggressive. They need to bide their time here. Defensive bombardment possibly coming out for Mercy only. We'll see exactly if he gets anything with it. Gets a decent tag onto Red Evo. Got some damage onto a Knock Shield as well. And that's more than enough time for Mr. Haculo to get uh, fully healed up and get back into this fight. They get a knock onto Stunny. They set up the crossfire. They are flanking, and they are going to be able to execute this entire squad make it look easy turning the tables onto them but again this is the issue you have to worry about the third parties coming in now as they have to watch their flanks there tricky goes down to six here bambino will fall and so we have some trades going on as eboy ronnie tries to get in on this fight as well he pulls out that massive he gets the knock onto petty boss finishes him off now we're down to six squads with 15 players remaining yeah to continue to add to his kill count as the kill leader now flow right as Naughty Zenial, RKN, holding this spot over towards the fences and towards this blue truck, another great spot to hold. All these teams know exactly where this one is gonna pull, but not many teams are able to get into the spot that they need to. So now we start to see everybody just waiting and posturing, trying to get over towards the rocks. Really great shots by Duplex, doing this as just a duo as well is a very strong statement to their individual skills. So great job by them as six is going to get knocked. Their team's going to be deleted. And only four squads left in this tiny circle. Of a uh, Bloodhound in the play, and we saw on his screen that he'd been scanned. So they know that he's the rat. They know he's over there. And so they are going to be cognizant of that and make sure they're keeping track of that right now as BFF, they have the best position. They have the Watson Trap set up for this ring. They have the high ground and they are just playing King of the Hill. Here comes a huge EMP though, and that's going to clear all the traps that were just set down. We'll see how quickly Blighty can reset them up as uh, Blighty does actually get a knock onto Aves, and with Duplex going down, now we're down to three squads left. Remember, it's just a solo for one of them. Ronnie's still alive. As Ronnie gets a Ronnie knock get onto knocks. Earth, he'll be able to get that as well. This is massive. Ronnie, Ronnie what are you doing? He gets another one onto Squishy. Blight's gonna finish that one. It's still Ronnie with three squads left, trying to do it big. He's got the red Evo armor. Can he hit the health pack? No, Fat Fruit Ninja shuts down the dream. Ronnie, you're my hero. What a series of events. BFF, nice job, but this was the Ronnie show. Yeah, take a look at some pathings and talking about for newer players on where to land. Whenever you land over towards Refinery, this is typically the best way to land is you send one person far right, one person, person far left. It's about the same time to loot both of those side areas. And then the lucky person gets that middle area. And then you start to kind of just take what you can get. You get the scraps over here towards this area on the toilet bowl, as we call it. And this is hopefully where you're going to find an armor if you're Farmer Lucas, because <laughs> I really think Refinery has some of the most unlucky loot in the game you can come over here and get completely stacked sometimes or sometimes you can walk away hoping that you find a leftover armor over towards the epicenter side so uh whenever you do take this pathing though there it is the blue armor for farmer lucas congrats that's the path that you want to take and now you can get out of here right around this two minute mark is when they should be good to go to make sure they have solid games two through five here on board with zaniles naughty and rkn we were saying they don't fight, er or they didn't have to fight early, but here they are. We got the EMP coming out for RKN here. I don't think they get much damage off of that now. As Stay Naughty throws in a nade, gets some connects with that scout, and RKN's the one that gets the knock onto Muffler. We'll instantly finish him off with that charge rifle. That should be two more points coming in for them. RKN playing on top of the drill tower here with that charge rifle. Oh my gosh, so this this looks like when the charge rifle was initially introduced to the game. Or scouting, covering third party areas, and great shots there with the Prowler and the Purple Bolt Ma Massif going to come in. Sung getting two knocks, one onto Stomps, one onto Borton. They should be able to clear this one out. 
and take over this trailer. And this is a tough spot, Jamerson. When you get there so early, teams are going to come after you. And then guess what? More teams are going to come in third party this one. So there's the finish. There's the res. And you need to clean this up fast because you do have at least two or three teams in the vicinity. You coming out from the other side. Pride wants to hunt this down, but Clarify is taking a lot of damage here. There's the Thermite on to the portal exit. Doesn't get any damage off, but he will with the Hemlock now. Dropping down as he gets cracked, throwing out another Thermite, trying to apply more and more pressure. And there it is. He hears the ticks. He sees the ticks. As he gets the bat off, he'll go ahead for the high ground once again. Arkstar out this time around, but it looks like too much time might have passed. Their opportunity starting to dwindle away here as uh, Pride not really able to see anything. Getting tagged up. He's going to have to back away, and they will be able to survive. Solafide just not able to mount enough pressure onto them, and they survive. Respawn just timed out, and Prideful, his whole team's about to time out as he's dropped multiple teams playing the edge. A lot more than we were expecting as we look at Bowser, Mini, and Petty Boss, a very, very skilled frog team going to go and wipe the team inside of the building for free is hundreds Caselos and sync we've seen what they could do already in their team fighting skills they got third party last game can they get a clean fight feed though farmer lucas is gonna get a knock as we're looking inside the diner over here bubble going down scan happening as well it's gonna be sumo gg and his squad taking on mini and petty boss the squad two knocks already for abusement park looks like they should be able to take this one i'm not sure the last person is alive but it's two versus one situation right now oh good damage coming across is, uh, right now, Zeno going to try and heal up. Looks like they might have been able to hold out. There is another squad coming in, though, and I think they just have to kind of book it out of here. So, uh, just clears out the bottom floor. Never mind. They'll be able to get the full reset along with the full heal. And uh, they should be good here. And so, Loose Moose, that's going to be Inspiring Moose 6 and Busby who are trying to control the Northern <laughs> Choke here. So, uh, a lot of teams, that's exactly what I expected coming in for the rotate here. And they're going to try and gatekeep them right now. Moose is going to go ahead and throw down this port, control the door. He can get back in, but he takes so much damage. Oh no, six drop down low as well. He's going to get knocked. And now basically it's just Busby left in this fight as Moose is trying to back away. Never mind. Onmu and squad will be able to clean this up very shortly. Moose left on his lonesome in a 1v3. And oh boy, I do not know what happened there to them. Why they committed so hard to try and get into Skyhook. <laughs> the Moose was loose, man. And I think what happened was is they're probably saying, can we take that portal? Can we take that portal? And he didn't say anything and they just took it or he lays the portal down and Six goes, I'm taking it. And before anything could happen, there was already a couple grenades on that one. So great job by SOB. Amu and his squad doing it big. They're going to find the final kill right there. Mercy only going to take out Inspiring Moose. But minions, they're stuck over here on the edge of the zone. Trying to make it through these Molotovs and Thermites. But it's difficult because there's only one door to go out of Jamerson. And that team is stacked on nades. Another fight though going on uh, over northeast, and I guess this is why that maybe they tried to rotate to to uh, through Skyhook. It's the gatekeepers, Solofide, Clarify, Muffins, uh, and Co. Just did not leave that spot whatsoever. We have finally hit placement point territory now, as minions are still stuck in this corner. As uh, did the ring just like back away? It looked like it was closing in on him, and then it just like receded there. Anyhow. Uh, they do have the Watson, uh, excuse me, Watson Ultimate uh, set up in a really good spot. It's not going to get cleared. They're going to have about another minute or so where they don't have to worry about nade spam, but it doesn't look like Free Smoke has any more nades to try and throw in. They weren't able to finish it off of that now, but at some point they're going to have to go and they do have, of course, um, the Crypto to work with. I don't know if he has his EMP. Back on over to Skyhook, though, as uh, we got that fight. Team Zero Tricky. Um, don't know exactly who they're fighting right now. They are getting naded out. They've got the rooftop to work with, and they'll be able to dodge a lot of this damage here. They try to reset. Zero Tricky has three cells left here. As now there's a third party also coming in from the tunnels, and so they've got to be careful in the way they approach this fight right now. They try to fight behind the building as the Ray tries to uh, port them out. They're right on top right now, but right back on over. They're going to try and make a two-pronged attack going on in. That's the 2v1. They wow. get the kill. And now they're going to be able to just execute off of this great, great push coming out from Team Zero Tricky.
when they're not getting third party, they're just so exciting to watch. You can see how they infiltrate a building. They get an advantage. They push it immediately. They don't waste any time going through the same door. They take the fences out. They shoot the same player. There's virtually nothing you could do or there's no legend that you could play that would stop the pressure coming in from Team Zeratricky there. They're finding a third coming in, so they do have to be careful. We know there's someone guarding the tunnel up to their uh, up to their west, and so they just go full bore onto Dirty, take him out just like that. They'll finish off the team fight. It's massive for them right now. On the western edge, though, it's going to be you like that, mate. Just drop down to only Crummy left remaining here for his squad. Now, they can still get revived. But it's going to be a difficult task here as the ring is so slow. No one's going to allow that to happen. They are inside. And it might have, it looks like he has a small angle to work with. He's going to be able to get the res onto one. Now here comes the unmounting pressure here as BFF, they're trying to hold on. They've got this little corner to work with. They're already aggressed upon. They are backed up. It's Blighty left by himself. We'll see if Blighty can survive. Sola Fide actually gets cleaned up by SZN as well. So much fighting going on now. Crummy backs away as his teammates will go down. He's at the bottom of this drill and he's gonna try and red it out, but there's two people on the other side. Gibraltar spots him out. Crummy, he doesn't have his Q to work with. He'll back away for now, somehow survives. And he pops that bat and he will be able to stay alive for now. If he could make it to the top five, that's great. We'll see how long he can rat this out for for his team. Watch. Yeah, it's just the Lurk, and, you know, this is uh, basically the Wanderer. He's just playing Fallout 76 over here, coming out from his vaults to see the nuclear wasteland. And it's just an apocalypse as everyone is going down in this mad scramble. There is not much to work with. The team to the north has fences. That's probably one of the best positions right now as Flo Rida. It's all up to Zaniles to keep it alive, but he will go down. That's top five for him. Squishy Muffler does secure top four for his team. Oh, with that Prowler, with that triple take, will try his best. He's able to swap off onto a red Evo. We can see if he picks up any more, but he will go down. But he at least secures top four for his team. And it's minions here as a top three. They've got a full uh, squad, I believe, SZN as well. It's gonna be a full three, but it's hundreds and co who have control of the ring right now. They've got a great crossfire set up and they will be able to finish it off and they take the win. Game number three, Series E, as we started all off. Minions with Casello's hundreds and Stink. Uh, they're dropped all the way on the southern side of the map. And as you can see, that looks like the ring is pulling towards the north. It could still be over by lava um, or thermal. Uh, we'll see in just a moment. It is going to be pulling over to thermal station, the secondary ring. You can see there the green on the bottom right. Uh, we don't have aim assist in the lobby, so that means Thermal Station is, of course, open for another squad. I don't know who's dropping there right now. Standing. First season here by having some highly intensified qualifiers and a lot of these teams getting used to each other. The play styles that they bring to the table, which team compositions that they use, which spots they like to land at, etc. As we start to look at a fight over here. As the Crypto EMP going to be used out very early, I wonder if a counter scan is going to be ready. It's EMP and Petty Boss having to pop the Q because of that EMP. So nice push, but usually when that EMP pops off, you want to see the aggression coming in immediately. And because that didn't happen, this Crypto team most likely going to back off. Yeah, Mini and Bowser set up a great crossfire, making sure that they just slow them down, stop them. And now it's the counter offensive coming out as Petty Boss is able to make his way to this building now. He didn't set up a port for his team, but he is up there mounting pressure, putting a stop to them right now. Good nades to do some decent damage to them. They're stuck. The door is closed. They're going to try and port out, but Petty Boss is taking a lot of damage. His armor has been cracked and he is forced to use his Q. He's going to back away and try to get underneath this building here as the entire team takes that port they're back on. They've just moved. Uh, and it's going to be Mini to go down first. And Oh boy, they've got to be careful. Bowser did trade away, takes out two, and oh no. The saddest part about the Civil War is when brother fought brother, Bowser taking out six. Oh, we'll see who walks out the ultimate victor in this fight. Petty Boss now do dropped down to 10 HP. Nah, he's going to get that bat off. We'll see Vusby with the armor swap, Petty Boss with the heal. Does he have any white meds for himself? Vusby. Doesn't look like it as he's not going for it now. He's going to pour it back to the other side. Petty Boss is aware of it. He swings back on over. He's going to try and cut him off at the 
pass as he is full HP. He's got the HP advantage right now, but it's the high ground on the other side. Petty Boss is cracked. He still has 100 HP to work with. He's dropped down now to 40 HP. Vuzby is starting to get the upper hand here. And again, they're just playing Portal over here. As it looks like enough damage was done, he's gonna go and for that res. Petty Boss himself will go for the res now. Now, this 2v2 has slowed down massively. He's got the charge rifle. He's considering it. We'll see. Oh no! Petty Boss goes up and now down to a 2v1. Mini tries to go close quarters and he gets cleaned up. This was a long fight, but Loose Moose will walk away with it. They got third partied in game number two and finished off this time around. It looks out they'll be able to go for the full reset. How is the entire lobby not here at this point? That fight took so long. There's multiple reses. They even had someone fly out from the sky off of a respawn ship. That was just great action back and forth from two really good teams, six individually skilled players making the right decision almost the entire time up until the point where they decided to challenge that two versus three. Once the res gets off, you may just want to try to dip out Try to grab that beacon if you can and try to reset maybe as this zone is just round one and closing as we look at series e is best rat it's rat ronnie over here he needs to change his name from e-boy to ronnie the rat but he's picked a good spot i gotta say i mean if i was a rat i'd probably be hiding here they can just continue to mosey their way on over towards the end of the zone and their team fighting skills are phenomenal so they're probably not too worried about it but Looking at a team that's in the thick of things over here. This is Loose Moose, six inspiring Moose and Bubsy trying to take out the team that's sharing the choke over here. Here's a very popular fight, but keep in mind there's entrances over towards the right side and behind where Loose Moose is. So if any teams come around the corner, that's going to be third, fourth party central. That's great damage coming out from six with that G7 scout. And that's going to allow Moose to get this high ground to uh, kind of pull this rock away from the other side, but they're taking so much damage here. The Watson Jenny is gonna go down for the squad for them to try and natty heal, but they've lost priority over this rock. Six is gonna try and get that back with that massive as he peeks on over from the left-hand side. Doesn't really spawn anything. He also sees that portal, and so that might just be over. Never mind. one still caught out over here. There's two. As uh, it looks like they are gonna start the chase now. Dropping on down, gets a good hit with the shoddy, and they're gonna continue the hunt. No, they maintain the position here on the high ground. Never mind, Moose just peeks and gets knocked, but it's gonna be difficult for the other squad to try and continue this push now. As you look at Dude's Night out and our rat cam, Ronnie's still into the next zone. We already know he's going to probably get second place from this position, so we could probably go to somebody else. So those are two honestly heavy hitters in this lobby right now, and I'd love to take a look at that fight. Zero Tricky making the entrance. Remember, they already have the man advantage here. They clear that Watson trap. They're going to go ahead and scan on in. The Revolt's bubble is used as well. Haculo gets the knock onto Bird, and it looks like in this 3v1, they should be able to finish this one off. 14 on the purple. Zero Tricky will get the thirst. They don't even get a knock. This is going to be difficult for any team to try in third party. They don't see the trade, and so they're not going to uh, they're not going to try and make a push off of this. They're going to allow them for the full kill. The teams there are tricky. They're doing such a great job displaying how well they team fight and especially push buildings. And the roof is great. You're also rocking this crypto. who will have his EMP up very shortly as we take a look at these nice bolt shots coming in from Parzilla. Team lifted, having to make their way across the lava over here to make their way into thermal. It's going to be fairly difficult with all of these squads around the outside. A lot of sniper rifles in play, too, as we take a look at Davis Waves in the top right getting a knock. Amu was down earlier, but he's back, and he gets a knock as well. So nice little shield swap over here, but you lose one player for lifted. It's going to make it difficult trying to get out of this one alive. Pick out a kill, couple kill points on the way out would be nice, and it looks like they're going to be able to do so. Well, Matt Pickett have his Watson generator ready for this as well. As uh, now they're making their play, they know that time is running out. They don't have uh, any time to really work with as the EMP is going to slow them down, but they're still up onto the roof. Matt Pickett with two Nox Castellos and hundreds down now. Hundreds thirsted off. It's a 3v1. They're going to net heal just a little bit. Never mind. Clear that Watson generator, and they will be able to finish him off. And now in what they have. Did they use Walter Bubble beforehand? 
NCS though, in a decent spot, but now they have to rotate, they have to get across, the EMP's gonna blow them down, and that might smell defeat for them. As you like that, mate, they do have the Gibraltar bubble to work with as they make this push. So many teams just falling to the wayside now as we're down to five squads remaining. You like that, mate, have made it into the circle, found a nice little pocket to work with. We'll see, one does get finished off. Two left here for NCS, two left, never mind, Matt Pickett will go down as well. So it's just a solo on that side. As, uh, never mind, it's a duo, Crummy and Rakanisha still alive, and this is what I'm talking about. A little bit of a pocket to work with. Klain gets finished off, now it's a 2v2. That's gonna be a super exciting 2v2. I wanna see you like that, mate, get a full heal off, but the other team doesn't allow them to. The pressure's starting to amount as Rakanisha, the last player alive. You can see the two players pushing over towards the bubble, but it's not gonna be enough. The Nuke Stars. Here we go, game number four. Taking a look at where we saw a zone pull over towards earlier. It's gonna be, did we make it, take it on a fight? And I think Studi is gonna get the knock right onto Blady. So they are trying to rotate over towards the refinery side, knocks on both sides. You can see Farmer Lucas is gonna find another one, but now it's a two on one. And Sung's coming in with the flank, great flank there, great shots, but oh my gosh, what was that? An, I think that was an EVA eight? Great shots there by Fat Fruit Ninja is going to leave it a 1v1. Suni has to heal. Yeah, Suni has to heal. They already got their thirst. So right now, there's no way for them to get the res. Never mind, there's one res coming across. Oh, wait, no, it's just Farmer Lucas bleeding out. And so Stuni's going to go ahead and push up now. But the HP advantage for Fat Fruit Ninja, he gets the upgrade with Stuni on that damage. He's going to be able to just hold this angle, though. He had that Watson generator to work with. He tries to take the high ground as uh, with that Volt and the Scout. Not the best uh, combination for close hand, or excuse me, close combat. It's the Mastiff on the other side for Stuni. going to pop the syringe, and we'll see if the peak comes out now. He's got to be careful. He's checking his left-hand flank. Now he's got the flank. Hits him for 81, and that could be the difference maker. Here comes the scan, but he's spotted out. He's going to wait out the timer on that, and as it finishes off, he pushes forward, pulls out that massive, is not able to connect, and oh boy. It's buying uh, Fat Fruit Ninja so much time. Comes in over the top, only hits for 26. He's having difficulty with these shots. Pulls out the trusted wingman instead. Goes in for the melee and will be able to finish him off. So we'll see how many teams try to rotate to the south right now. Oh, there's a team right below them. Nice Drago shot. getting decent damage off with that Spitfire. Now he's going to go ahead and swing on up to the high ground here. <laughs> try and cut them off. Don't get to see that as often. I love seeing these Pathfinders coming back on out. He's getting decent damage. They're not aware of him up top. And oh my god, he is just a turn up there doing so much for the squad. Timbo gets the knock. It's traded away, but Drago gets one more on to Casellos, bringing it down to a 2v1. Oh, will he be able to survive? No, he's cut off and they will be finished off. It's going to be DPT taking that fight. And now they have control of this choke. At uh, Geyser, we're having a fight. It's going to be Stunny taking out Petty Boss and Mini as Bowser picks up Woo! Sung. Stunny will be able to clear this one out and keep this one alive for his squad. Wow, we just caught the tail end of that fight. But again, we're seeing a lot of these teams big big heavy hitters going at it in the mid game and now we're starting to see how brutal these rotations can be and why it's so important to hold the tops of the roofs of the buildings that we saw earlier so you can Java's gonna peep on in from the window and GS Burn goes down one more time they are pushing up top never mind it was just the one as Moose tries to go in on that zone is now closing in GS Bird will go Bye bye, along with Stunny and Sung will be finished off. They get top 10. Mercy already making his way over there. Hakula is going to make his way with that zip line. And then it's going to be Zare Tricky hitting a big scan so they can find the information. While that's happening, another portal's being placed. I think a team's trying to dip out of it. Oh, but the entry is here for Hakula, and he's hitting off more than he could do at this point. He's going to get it off. No, Zare Tricky is there to back him up. And he's getting some decent damage off. He got the knock onto Tempo, but there are just so many Watson traps here. It makes it difficult for him to fully commit onto this push. He's going to back away with this battery, and now the wing is going to close, and that's going to be the extra pressure onto them. They try to go for the res onto Haculo. Mercy only now has to full heal, and he only has small heals to work with. 
Oh boy, both teams just might be dead to the ring here. As this fight is taking way too long right now. They are full committing on to this. Zero Tricky goes down. And now things are looking bad. As Mercy only tries to get the flank, but he will fall himself. It's all up to Mr. Aculo. But now the ring is closing in on them. He's going to try and survive for as long as possible. We made it to the top seven here, but Aculo runs into a different squad. We knew that was waiting for them. It's going to be crummy to pick that one up. There's the port, but it's right into some Watson traps. And now they're getting slowed down. DPT getting burned away by the ring. Drago can't even swing away. And it's Prideful left alive by himself. They are finished off. Both squads kind of just griefing each other there at the end. But ultimately, yeah. it was just great control of the choke, making sure they had no other option but to die to the reef. Grief is the correct word there. The fact that both of those teams decide that they want to fight there, then they want to fight to the death, is just a very, very greedy play coming in. Nobody wanting to commit to something larger than them, which is winning the game, getting the points that they need to continue to advance. They're tricky. They're already sitting in first, so... I don't think they're too concerned. Meanwhile, take a look at what's happening over towards the end zone. It's going to be RKN with some really nice shots and the res coming in onto Zenile. Three squads left, seven kills over here. Flowrider really starting to put together a very nice game. We were talking about this at the beginning of game number four here, Flowrider. Now that they're not getting dropped 50-50 and having to take that and getting better rotations off the timings off of that, they're able to now convert, picking off clarify and now they are in the top two it's about pushing the god spot here we said it can be difficult but they've got the full three they're pushing up together as a squad as they mount on up they see the watson traps and those watson traps are just way too far back you cannot try and play that position here and give up so much ground allow them to get up here for free and now they have the position it's uh, all about closing this one out and uh, choking out this last squad but what a way to do it. Eight points, eight kill points on Arcan. Don't know how many Naughty has or Zanile has, but this is going to be a massive game for them. No doubt about it. And they're in such a great spot holding this high ground. Looks like this team is playing scared because of the fact that they obviously only have one player. And surprise, that's not E-Boy Ronnie there ran it out. It's going to be Flo Rida as your champions. We're going straight into game for that. It's game number five. Gold Volt. Love the digi threat on this one. They didn't spot the player over towards the right. Nice defensive bubble coming in, but I don't think it's going to be enough as they're starting to push in with this Mastiff. Great shimmy there by the Gibraltar, but it's not going to matter. Suni kind of picking off where he was in the previous game there as the kill leader. It's going to be three kills, and there's the third party coming in, Jamerson. It's also going to be an EMP. I don't think they're going to be able to avoid these nays. So many of them, the knock coming through. It's going to be flying saucers. Yeah, I didn't know that uh, Bangalore was still in the game right now. That's heavy artillery as all the nades were used for the EMP going to come through and now everybody going to reset with a couple of heals as we're looking at who they're as we're looking at who they are fighting. It's going to be amusement park with the high ground counter EMP coming in. They're not able to destroy the drones, so they will take a little bit of damage with the armor. Worst case scenario, it is going to help charge that Evo shield up, but. Great shots there with the Hemlock, and that's going to call out for the drop and the, the drop and the charge. One knock is going to come in, but it's not going to be enough damage. Denial's team is going to drop, and now you're going to have another player over here towards the right-hand side. Nice little shimmy shake. That's the third party coming in. It's going to be Girth's squad coming through. Found themselves in another fight so far, but their economy looks great. Three bats on Mr. Haculo. He's got plenty of heavy ammo and plenty of shotgun ammo for that Mastiff. And so they're doing their part to make sure that their left and right are checked here. I mean, with the changes to this map, especially to this tunnel, you have to play this one macularly. There are so many different angles you have to check as you push up. And uh, clearing out their back is going to be important here. The ring is going to work as a natural barrier for them and uh, make it a little bit easier to hold. Speaking of easier to hold, clearing that EMP before it does any damage is huge for them as they're tricky. Goes for that scan and oh, the volt damage coming out for them now. 
You know, they've got the damage, they've got the health advantage as they charge forward. Very aggressive Gibraltar bubble here as they try to close the angle. Zeratruki now watches the flank, but instead, it's gonna be from the front. The Mastiff is out as he flicks for that shot. Pulls out the bolt now, will be able to get the knock, but oh boy, Mercy only has gone down as well. Mr. Hakula taking a lot of damage now as they're looking to finish this fight out. They've got the gen to work with for the Natty heals, and there we go. They finish off Squishy Muffler, and they will be able to uh, stay in control of this tunnel. Now they have plenty of time to just recover here. Great fight there, and nice shots here by Petty Boss. Thought the grenade was going to connect, but he's going to full send this one as the portal goes down. Very popular play to go and try to pressure a team so they can't go and get that portal and get the escape plan out. Typically, you're going to have numbers when that happens. That's going to be Muffins that he gets the knock on. Bowser is going to get the finish with a fragment grenade. And Frog has been looking like a team that does deserve to be in Series E right now, the way they're playing this one. Again, like you said, Jamerson, first four games. Not their best, but now we're starting to see what they're capable of. They're extremely talented, and they're so strong at team fighting. And Bowser just plays so aggressive, as you want your Bloodhound to do, in these small little team fights. And great armors, ideal gun situation here, high ground positioning. Could be an opportunity to add a ton of points to the record. Yeah, this is a team we know has a lot of potential. They've played together for a while. Um, speaking of Petty Boss and Mini, uh, who used to play with Unin under the banner Smile, uh, now adding on Bowser here, on board with uh, NCS, who took a win wow. early on, but kind of has slowed down. Barbalo with some nice shots. We'll take out Sir Lifts a lot. This is going to be a 1v2 as Merle tries to push on in, tries to stop the res, but he doesn't have his teammate there. He will be able to finish him off, though. And uh, it's actually with the help, it looks like, of E-Boy Ronnie, but that means the third party is coming, and they're going to try find an angle to heal up here. Barbalo has the armor swap, doesn't have white heals or something. I don't know why he's taking so long to heal here. Took some damage. He's got a Phoenix kit. We'll see if uh, Merle is going to be able to buy some time for him as the ring starts closing in on them. It's so close. The zone is creeping up. One second, he's going to get it off barely as he does take shots over towards the side. So extremely important to get that off as one little tick of damage is all that it takes. I'm curious to see if he's going to be able to make it through. No, it's going to be Ronnie there with the gatekeeping. And I don't think Ronnie's a rat this time, so most likely going to have some reinforcements for the first time in quite some time. But no, it is Ronnie the Rat. He was. He is holding <laughs> off two players, and what do you know? It's Ronnie by his lonesome doing Ronnie things. Even gets the kill there on the way out. But Team Zara Tricky always seems to be in these dominant positions and always seems to be next to their teammates as he's laying down some nice... 2x r301 shots across the map right there and see ping is coming down they're trying to take over this team's spot and get over towards the high ground and kind of filter everybody into the new zone early and then allow them to fight each other and as they do that they're going to come in for the final third party so you see the idea behind their thought process here and let's see if they can execute it yeah they're trying to play towards the slow side of the ring as well to uh kind of relieve some of the pressure that will come down shortly here these scans are so valuable for zara tricky right now giving them the information they need to take the proper team fights let's say it might just be a ret on the other side we'll see if they full commit onto that or try and set up a cross angle they have 30 seconds to work but the time is starting to dwindle out uh dwindle down as uh they yeah only spot out the one it's a red evil on the other side He's got the Beast of the Hunt to pop as well for this one. So he'll be able to do scans upon scans upon scans. But his attention is here, making sure that this flank is watched, that they're not going to get caught out. Mr. Haculo will port them into position with some nice cover on the north side of the ring. Another scan coming out now as Zeratricky will finally pop that Beast of the Hunt. And the red outlines gives him all the information. The 301 working at a great distance right now. A lot of the SMGs on the other side that they are running them, like the Volts, uh, they're just not within that headshot range, so you're not getting the full damage potential. But with this R301, the headshots land, the headshots do full damage, and he is doing it right now. They have set up for themselves here on the northern side now as they back away from that defensive bombardment. 
He's able to spot out one throughout all of that visual clutter, clutter, throws out another scan. There's a bubble as well for his team as they try to charge on up. Mercy only will be able to get the knock onto Tech, finish him off. Saucer dies to the ring, and now it's all up to this. Zara Tricky looking to finish this one off. There's two on the other side here. No, it looks like it's a full three, man. Knock onto many, and it looks like Frog not going to be able to finish this one off. It's a man advantage. Never mind. Huge plays coming out. Petty Boss gets the knock on to Mercy only. Mr. Haculo is dropped down, and Zeratrick is going to try and hold the line, but no, they got the flank. Going to be traded, though. As it uh, looks like wow. Frog actually wins that one out. And of course, special thanks to EA for partnering with us and allowing us to be able to do this here at Series E, giving as many people in Apex Legends a chance to really play competitively at the pro level. And so we've got three teams now. Three teams, Amasis, THT, and Flowrider, who have secured their spots, their partnered spots here at Series E. Next week, that's going to be the culmination of our qualifiers. We're going to find our next six partner teams. So make sure that you're following the channel. Make sure you tune in next week because six teams will be earning their spot. That's going to do it for us here, though. Thank you again to all of our partners. Thank you to EA. Thank you to everyone at Esports Arena. But most of all, thank you all, everyone at home, for watching and allowing us to do what we love here, which is talk about Apex Legends. We'll see you guys next week for the conclusion of the Series E qualifiers. See you guys next week.